Frank Castle is on a major tear with the War Machine suit. Now that the entire superhero community is at his heels, though, how much longer can he survive? Well, let's hop on in together to the Punisher issue number 225 and see for ourselves, shall we? Okay then, so as the last issue had left off, the Punisher was staring down a mob of superheroes all hell-bent on bringing him to justice. Frank is certainly not going to surrender, and he's definitely not one to back away from a fight, even when the odds are pretty insurmountable. I mean, that's basically his character. He fights a never-ending war on crime and corruption that's never-ending for a reason. To the Punisher's credit, though, he does manage to use his superior tactics and the power of the War Machine suit to take out some D-list heroes that no one would really care about, like Tigra and U.S. Agent. You know, just two characters who are probably super happy Captain Marvel invited them to the manhunt party. Things get rougher, though, when the Punisher comes face to face with some of the Marvel Universe's heaviest hitters, your Herculeses, your Luke Cages, your Things. They do a massive number on the suit, which means Frank is forced to retreat. Now he's on the run, but moreover than that, he needs to find someone who can repair his suit. This means he leads some of our favorite heroes all across New York City on a wild goose chase, trying to hunt him down everywhere he goes. First, Frank tries to look for the Tinkerer, and when that doesn't work, he opts instead to turn his attention to another AIM splinter faction made up of a bunch of weekend warrior would-be supervillains. Frank shoots his way through all of them until he finds one guy who majored in robotics in school. Now, if you're anything like me, you're probably wondering, hey, how come Frank just doesn't tell the rest of the superheroes that Nick Fury put him up to it? He wouldn't be lying. In fact, it was Nick Fury that turned Carol Danvers after him. Even going as far as to exploit her grief over Rhodey's death and, you know, not mention the fact that that leader that the Punisher killed, yeah, that was kinda sorta on his orders. That doesn't happen, but the Punisher does eventually track Nick Fury down, him more or less being the true antagonist of this story. Nick says, you know what, even if he could call off the heroes? He wouldn't, as this is something that's been coming for a long time now. Someone finally willing to punish the Punisher for the things he did wrong. And that's, you know, not just for gunning down muggers all day, every day, or destabilizing nations. No, no, no. This still all comes back to Frank willingly joining Hydra during Secret Empire. What's new about this exchange, though, is that for the first time ever, Frank actually manages to show a little bit of remorse for the bad stuff he did. He says he wished he could take it back, but he doesn't know how. But once again, Nick Fury, being master manipulator spy that he is, gives Frank just a gentle nudge, saying, you know, you could hunt down all the Hydra guys who managed to escape. That'd be pretty sweet. Although to do all that, the Punisher is going to need a little extra intelligence, and to get it, why doesn't he go to the Central Agency of Intelligence? They seem like a pretty good bet. And it's right around there, the comic ends. So that's Punisher 225, everybody, and overall, I continue to really enjoy what Rosenberg is doing with this story, especially here in this newest issue where he basically comes out and says, yes, my entire run on this character up until this point has been one giant redemption arc for Secret Empire. It's also a pretty impressive gamble to have the comic essentially get Frank to admit he's wrong without admitting that he was wrong and undercutting the character in any way. Because, let's face it, Frank Castle is at the end of the day something of a psychopath, and Nick Fury is, you know, definitely on the grayer and grayer scale of morality. It's also kind of fun, too, to see the Punisher forced to deal with being upgraded to a higher bracket of heroism where more eyes are on him and, you know, there's more scrutiny to his actions than ever before. Plus, I mean, hey, who doesn't enjoy the promise of Punisher versus Baron Zemo? You just know that's going to be a fun time. Overall, I'd give this a 7 out of 10. Enjoyable stuff. Hey there everyone, it's Cape Jewel again. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, why not check out some of these other videos I've been working on from the channel? Then you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook at Cape Jewel, so you're always up to speed on what I'm doing next. And hey, if you're in the market for a comic book trade and don't want to pay a lot of money, please use my book depository link down in the description. Not only will you save a bundle, not have to pay for shipping, but everything you buy via my link goes to support me in the channel, which is always nice. So until next time, everyone, thanks again for watching, and I will be back again with more comic content that smacks of greatness.